Dietary fats and lipids are important parts of our diet, as they are essential for life and for proper functioning of our body. Fats and lipids are important sources of energy, are structural components of cells, and help to develop our brain and keep its function. Furthermore, lipids are an important solvent and carrier for fat-soluble vitamins, flavor compounds and the precursors, and are substantial for the texture of many foods. Edible fats and oils also contain so-called essential fatty acids, which are components that are required for certain body function. As our body cannot produce essential fatty acids by itself, we need to provide them via our diet. I always knew that I'm extremely important. Let's go for all of this nice food here. What are we going to try first? Slow down, Ali. You are important for humans, but it is a little bit more complicated than you might think. First of all, it is the overall amount of fat that we consume. The WHO recommends that less than 30% of the total energy intake should come from fats. Excess consumption of dietary fat will put us on an increased risk for various diseases, including the metabolic syndrome. Then I will take a biscuit. I cannot see any fat there. That cannot make me fat. Stop, Ali. There might be a lot of fat in this biscuit. And not only in this biscuit, in approximately two-thirds of food types we cannot see the fat, so we should be careful. You might also have heard that some types of fat are good and that we should avoid or reduce the consumption of other types of fats. To better understand why some types of fats and oils are good and why we should avoid others, we need to cope with the chemical structure of fats and oils. First of all, we need to understand the basic chemistry of fat to get a better insight into the role of dietary fat for our health and also for food technology. Dietary fat is basically composed of two building blocks. One building block is glycerol, which serves as a kind of backbone, and the second building block consists of fatty acids. Fatty acids contain a straight carbon chain of different lengths with a carboxyl group at the very end. When the fatty acids are attached to the glycerol backbone, we call it a glyceride. Optionally, one, two or three fatty acids may be attached to the glycerol backbone. Usually, in edible fats and oils, we find complex mixtures of what we call mono, di or triglycerides. This is how we imagine a triglyceride with a glycerol backbone here on top and the three long fatty acids attached to the glycerol. The impact of edible oils and fats on our health is not related to the glyceride structure, so if we consume mono, di or triglycerides, it is more important to know which types of fatty acids are attached to the glycerol backbone. First, we need to differentiate between fatty acids of different chain lengths. Those fatty acids that we usually find in various food commodities cover the range between 4 to 22 carbon atoms in the chain. Furthermore, we need to differentiate between saturated fatty acids, monounsaturated fatty acids, and polyunsaturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids are straight chain structures with 100% single bonds. Monounsaturated fatty acids carry one double bond in the chain, and polyunsaturated fatty acids carry more than one double bond in the chain. Each double bond that is found in the carbon chain has impact on the geometric structure of the fatty acid. And as a consequence, the properties of the fats and lipids are impacted. Did I get that right? I am made from long chains? I do not feel chained. This is correct, Ali. But don't worry, they're very small. You won't feel the chains. Look, I brought some models of the molecules to give you a better picture. This is a saturated fatty acid with a long straight chain. This is a monounsaturated fatty acid with a double bond that gives a knee to the chain. And this here is a polyunsaturated fatty acid with two double bonds and knees in the chain. Even though these three fatty acids have the same number of carbon atoms in their chains, they look pretty different due to the number of double bonds they contain. You might also have heard about the terms omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. 
Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids belong to the group of polyunsaturated fatty acids. The term omega-3 describes that the first double bond in the molecule can be found at the third carbon atom when counted from the methyl end, which is the omega position in the molecule. Same for omega-6. The first double bond is located at the carbon atom number 6 when counted from the methyl end of the fatty acid. The difference is in the chain lengths and the numbers of double bonds result in different physical properties, like for example their melting points and also their functional properties for the human body. The presence of double bonds in the chain also influences the chemical properties of the fatty acids, especially their sensitivity to oxidative reactions. Unsaturated fatty acids show a high reactivity to oxygen. The higher the number of double bonds in the chain, the higher is the reaction rate. Oxidation of edible oils and fats lead to the formation of rancid odor of the product and consequently the oil does not taste nice any longer. However, other products are formed during lipid oxidation which might be harmful for the human body. Different dietary fats and oils have a different composition of fatty acids. Saturated and short-chain fatty acids are primarily found in fats derived from animal sources, meat and meat products, as well as milk and milk products. Also palm oil and coconut oil are rich in short-chain and saturated fatty acids. Usually these types of fat are solid at room temperature. Most fats and oils that are derived from plants contain high amounts of unsaturated fatty acids and are liquid when stored at room temperature. Also fat from fish, such as salmon or trout, are rich in omega-3 fatty acids. The most important omega-3 fatty acids from fish are called EPA and DHA, and they are essential fatty acids. There is another term that you should be familiar with, and this is the term trans fatty acid. Trans fatty acids are unsaturated fatty acids, and the term trans refers to the geometric arrangement of the double bond in the carbon chain. In fats and oils derived from any plant material, the double bonds are always arranged in the cis form, as you can see at the example of oleic acid. When the double bond is arranged in the so-called transform, this gives a different geometric shape, which is similar to that of saturated fatty acids. You can see this at the example of stearic acid. Trans fatty acids naturally occur in fat tissue and milk fat from cows and sheep. As the cis trans fatty acids, which they consume with their feedstock, is isomerized into trans fatty acids in the rumen during the digestion process. And from there, the trans fatty acids find their way into the milk fat and the fat tissue of the meat. Hydrogenation of fats and oils is a technological source for trans fatty acids. From a technological point of view, hydrogenation is performed to trigger the physical properties of your fat in a way you need it for the production of certain food commodities. For example, with this technique, you can produce a solid or spreadable fat such as margarine from a liquid oil. In addition, hydrogenated fats are usually more stable during processing and storage than fats and oils with high amounts of unsaturated fatty acids. However, in several regions of the world, legislative limits the concentrations of trans fatty acids in foods when hydrogenated fats and oils are used. I know a lot about fat chemistry now, but why is this important for me? And is it somehow important for you? Thank you, Ali, for this important question. I almost forgot. Now, as you have achieved a basic understanding on fat chemistry, I can give you the following recommendations to reduce your risk from suffering from the metabolic syndrome. First, do not consume more than 30% of your overall energy intake from fats and oils, which corresponds to approximately 45 to 80 grams of fat per day for females and 55 to 100 grams of fat per day for males. Secondly, try to reduce the intake of saturated fatty acids in your diet, especially of hydrogenated fats. The same is recommended for trans fatty acids from hydrogenated fats. And last but not least, try to increase the amount of polyunsaturated fatty acids in your diet, and especially the amount of omega-3 fatty acids. If you follow these recommendations together with a balanced diet and sufficient physical activity, this will help you to reduce your personal risk for suffering from the metabolic syndrome.